Start the recording. And out the post. Pause stream on that site. general. All right. So, last time that we joined our adventurers, we had left off with the return trip from Balin having been completed. We would learned all the info you had and throughout the catacombs within and how that connected to what you now know as the Vith. And upon telling the dwarves, they informed you of... Thank you for the host, Tim. They informed you of a bit more of the history surrounding uh, not only the dwarves themselves, but the races and the tensions between them to some degree in general throughout the realm. After a bit of shopping and recouping and buying from some of the money that the dwarves provided you, including some of their own wares that they brought in for your uh, perusal, among other things, you had grouped up and were deciding which of the three anchor locations you as a group wanted to head, head toward. <laughs> Uh, during the final days of your opportunity stay, uh, the guards had caught wind of some sort of magical use within your camp's group, which spread to the arbiters, these strange, intimidating figures that floated around town and were known to be mage hunters and magic quellers, uh, now had the attention turned to you. And in an attempt to escape town upon the confrontation of one on your camp, a short but deadly skirmish broke out between the Arbiter, a number of guards, and the group of you. At first, it looked a little dicey, uh, but things started to turn to your favor as guards started to get dwindled, uh, and the Arbiter was pushed back, uh, uh, somewhat afraid, it seemed, to get so close to how many spellcasters you had, uh, and the, the numbers you had over them. However, through a devastating error... In Noth's battle for me, in, in Noth's way of battling, he exposed his midsection ever so slightly too much, and one of the guards got a critically wounding hit and disemboweled him, dropping him not only to his knees, but also to death. Before the Arbiter could finish you all, seeming to attempt to blow you up or trying to blow you up with a fireball. Sin countered the spell and dispersed the magic f as it turned to a mist and dissipated around you all. With that and the guards more or less already in shambles, the Arbiter went for reinforcements, ordering the guards to stay. However, once the Arbiter left, without the presence of their leader, they quickly fell, uh, fell, fell apart in rank, one attempting to run off into the distance, only to get utterly mowed down by the carriage and trampled by the horses and its wheels. Another begged for his life and crawled off, and a third died within the fight itself. 
quickly, not knowing how much time you all had before the Arbiters regrouped their efforts and came back. You hurriedly, hurriedly loaded the carriage with all of your, your bodies, including the body of Noth, and bolted west of town. Fizz, coming up with the quite quick thinking of attempting to draw crowds through music and the disturbance of just a quickly moving cart, uh, blocked up the bridges, slowing the Arbiter's advance, although you were already far too gone for them to seemingly catch up. And everything fell to silence at the events of what had happened. A number of days went by as everyone contemplated the actions that happened this time around in Opportunity, and what it may mean for if and when you decide to return in the future. Some discussions were had as to what to do with Noth and his body. Due to the magical nature of many of your guys' knowledge and experience, it was even talked of the possibility of attempting to restore his life or being in some essence. Everything from true resurrection to reincarnation to soul binding to an item was brought up. And in the end, Sin, your somewhat mysterious companion, the one who saved you all from the fireball, with his divine magic that he seems to possess, not only was able to stay the body from decay until you had the time to come across such a discovery or ability to restore life, but also gave Tawin the option to ask the spirit of Noth a number of questions in some attempt to discern what Noth would want, despite his being dead. Tawin got the answers that he asked, as cryptic as they were in places, and kept other information to himself, and decided to instead, in the time being, begin the research in his blood book for any answers, and just out of frustration that magic continues to sway the lives of those around you all. One night, Wizrun approached Tawin and offered to aid him in his studies and understanding of this strange book of magic that he contains and offered that they work together to come up with some solution, not only for the protection of the party, but in some way to honor Noth as well, perhaps. More days of travel went by as everyone recouped their wounds and settled back into the mode of traveling long distances over a fairly boring road. One afternoon, you came across a rather eccentric painter who wanted everyone to pose for him in a painting that he was constructing on a landscape view. However, in the desire to continue their quest, the group decided to not entertain the painter and his request and instead move onward. It was a few days later from that that it, a, a painting itself was discovered within the carriage. Although RJ and his masterful I, ability to identify and smelled the essence of magic, had the hunch, not only discovered that the painting was magical in nature, but that it was also cursed, and immediately destroyed the thing. It was also revealed that Drix perhaps did see it, thereby activating its magic, and so for a day or so after, it was instead Tawin's, or Fizz's job, I believe, to uh, to drive the cart, 
not wanting the cursed magic to cause Drix to lose his way until it could be certain that Drix was bereft of the influence of the painting. And without it returning or anything of that nature, it seems to be behind you all, deftly caught by RJ. More travel came after that, and we left off with a call being made by Drix and those atop the carriage walk, watching ahead on the road, that there was something up ahead on the side of the road. Rounding a bend and a small patch of trees, it can be seen on the distance, just on the edge of the road, that there is some smaller, uncovered cart that seems to have been left wayward. A number of boxes seem to be within, one of which has been uh, removed from the cart and lays partially broken on the side of the trail itself. Crouched around this broken crate are a number of dogs, it seems, or some sort of hound or beast-like creatures, as you're still quite a bit, a little bit too far to make out any details. They're small, dog-like in build, and there are four of them. The carriage was drawn to a stop, And Drix, after he stops the carriage, turns back to, flings the little side door open for anyone who's inside. Uh, we uh, got some dogs or something up uh, up ahead on the trail, a cart or something. Um, we want to check it out at all, or am I just going around? Or uh, it's up there. You might want to look at least. Um, I looked at uh, Tawin. Do you want to go check it out for us? We'll be, I'll be right behind you. Sure. <clears throat> See what this is. It's just dogs. It shouldn't be anything too. Uh, Tywin will jump off the top of the caravan. He has a spear. He has his his spear drawn and his shield to his also with him. Mm -hmm. I head off the caravan about ten paces away from uh, Tawin. Yeah, how close did we get? They're about eighty feet or so ahead. This group, right. this group of carts and these and these animals. Okay. Uh, well, they don't seem to notice you yet. Or if they do, they don't care. From this distance, I, go ahead. I certainly wouldn't want to be the only one not at a interesting party, so I will <laughs> is will step off the caravan, following twenty yards behind Tywin. <laughs> twenty uh, yards. Uh, <laughs> uh, Aaron is Aaron's right next to RJ. <laughs> <laughs> you, also, you mean feet or yards? Because that's a very big difference. Sorry, feet. 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 <laughs> 20 feet. 20 feet. <laughs> He's just skulking 60 Vizca's feet off in the tree line. Yeah, uh, I'm used to metric, okay? <laughs> you mean music? Yard yards, Imperial. Same thing, right? <laughs> yeah. Fizz went to public school. <laughs> I did go to public school. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we didn't even go to school. I'm guessing with my nine perception, I'm not uh, can't figure out if the dogs are fighting over anything or. And they all seem to be gathered around one of these, um, and more invested in in whatever <laughs> this broken crate is than anything else going around them or you guys. All right, I'm. Tywin's going to lead the way. Okay. He's going to be in a more, he's going to be in a like defensive pose as he moves slowly, trying to move stealthily as he could get a better look at this. Yep. Here's Any, my stealth roll. Yep. Anyone else that's following suit in the terms of uh, stealth, go ahead and roll. Oh no, no, they know I'm coming. So oh, I will be. <laughs> <stealth>. <laughs> 
Nithirn sticks off to the edge, right? There's a little brush here and there. She's kind of using it to keep line of sight more or less broken. RJ's kind of along the side of the road, but still, yeah, he's short. So, like, you know, some of the brush and stuff up ahead as well is obscuring his view. Fizz is just Fizz is further back. <laughs> Taween, you've got, like, sword and spear, like, defensively ready, and you're just tromping right down the middle of the trail. <laughs> Yeah. You, your 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 footsteps and your and your speed is stealthy, but you're just out in the open. Yeah. <laughs> Fine. My my stealth is a negative two right now anyway, so it's what. How how close do you lead the pack up to? What is your intention here? How f how far do I feel like I need to? How close do I feel like I need to be to get a good view of what the hell's going on? Of what they are, at least. If I they mean, are something more than a dog. I, that, that's up to you. At what point do you wish to try and discern that you, sort of thing? You said they were, what, 80 feet away from us right from the beginning? <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I, I get 50 feet. Get okay. a little bit closer and then do a quick perception yeah. check if i'm allowed to yeah yeah roll a perception and as okay well that's fine but as you get closer and closer that quote unquote dc will go down right of what sort of it's the information you see yeah so um from even from 50 feet you know they they look to be four dogs they all seem to be of the same breed they're muscular and stocky um you have knowledge of nature or... I have knowledge. I have handle an hand handle animal. That's like not no... gonna help you with the knowledge of what kind of dog they are. <laughs> uh, no, I have geography and arcane. Well, anybody who does have knowledge, nature, and is discerning the dogs, may roll if they will wish. You, will you tell uh, RJ what it what the dogs look like? You're ten foot behind, so yeah. All right. Hey. They but, look like they look like normal dogs, good hardy ones. Like they're not like bigger than a normal dog, right? From this look? No, they're oh, not bad. abnormal in terms of a dog. It's certainly not like a chihuahua or something. Uh and they're not and they're not wolves or anything of that nature. Um That was a bad, bad roll. Yeah, I mean, but it's a common dog breed. So they're bull mastiffs. And at this point, I'm still like only ten feet away from the carriage, so I'm guessing I <laughs> probably can't make them out. Yeah, I mean, Taween, they've got large, you know, muscular bodies, slightly shorter <laughs> legs. Um, I think they might just be strays. The short hair. You think it's safe, you think it's safe to move closer? Maybe. Let's try, uh... Should I fire a warning shot? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be the worst idea. They might run off if we do something. Well, I think we might want to do something with loud noises first. Uh, I have loud noises. I have loud noises. <laughs> <laughs> Are you actually yelling that? Well, I'm 20 feet behind you. Well, 10 feet behind you, I guess. So. Yeah. Raised voice, not quite yelling. Raised voice so that I could communicate with you. Question is, did the dogs notice us with that raised voice? As you guys are talking, uh, you see one of them like lifts its head and look, looks up in your direction and just kind of locks locks eyes with you, Taween. <laughs> I lock eyes back. <laughs> Give us a few barks. But you don't move for a good 10 seconds or so, and it just. You see it go back down, grab a bite of whatever it's eating. A few seconds later, it looks back up in your direction, sees that you haven't moved, eyes you for a few more seconds. Goes back, or who, or, or who it's eaten. Doesn't seem like they're dangerous. 
At least not overly dangerous. They're not at least aggressive. What size cart is this that was knocked over? It's some smaller. It looks like maybe even two people could pull it along if need be, or one horse, even if it was a crappy mule horse like you had before. It's very reminiscent of what you had in the mountain crossing, that crappy little thing that barely held the few people. <laughs> in what direction does it look like it was going? Uh, the same direction you are headed. At least is its orientation and reference to the road. I, I tap RJ on the shoulder and sign carts don't drive themselves. Ms. Kocha, now, Darwin, can you try to get them away from the cart for us? Uh, yeah, I'll try something. <clears throat> I, I start to inch closer now that they kind of know that we're coming. It's pointless to be stealthy. But I move slowly at the same time with my shield and spear ready at any point and I'm going to try and make like a I'm going to intimidate them make yeah. like a get get boy get get out of here type of thing like yell use a shouting voice uh huh my intimidate's not even that bad and I have weapon in hand just ready that for a, that was a <laughs> not great roll but okay um the, the one looks up at you, then they all kind of look up at you, and they and they lock eyes. There's like a bit of panic in a couple of them. There's a couple of, of gruff barks. Like, they fight you for a second, but then you, yeah, yeah! And uh, and they turn, and they dash off into the, into the brush. They're <clears throat> just dogs. Nothing to worry about. I no. go, I... I start heading out to the cart. All right. I, I start inching closer to the cart now that they're gone a little bit faster, but at the same time, I'm ready for anything. Just because something did kill the people, or at least something happened to this caravan. Mm -hmm. Probably wasn't the dogs, but something happened. Yep. Likewise, safety in, in, in defense mode. So I'm going to throw another perception check out there. <clears throat> That's just me like, keeping an eye on everything in the general facility. Okay. Yeah, you uh, you get a bit closer. You get closer and closer, and you get to that point where you're like 10 feet out from the carts. Uh, and you can see now, um, as you're kind of... A, uh, there's like there's very tall grasses that it's kind of been pulled up into. And so it takes till you're quite a bit closer to actually see what has laid down the grass in this area. It looks to be a crate, um, but the one of the corners is broken open. Uh, and you can see that there's uh, a white pile of salt and what looks to be uh, partially torn through wraps and wrappings uh, with bits and chunks of meat. Half eaten, uh, meat. like salted meats that were, you know, contained in a box, wrapped in, and then put in salt as well. Hmm. Noth, would, Noth would have liked this meat. And you can also clearly see that the wheel of the cart uh, on the left side looks to be off its axle. <laughs> Look around for signs of anything on the off the road either direction. And I, oh. and I start looking in, in the cart itself to see if there's anything weird in there. Navar, quick mm -hmm. question. Are you considering what we are, the environment that we are in right now, wooded? Uh, not really, no. It's more grasslands. Just, just as a reminder, I know it would not have helped me at all on that roll, but I do get a plus two on stealth in the woods. Noted. But yeah, it wouldn't have helped me at all in that, with that roll. <laughs> <laughs> so, as, as you guys begin to look around, you see that there are probably three more uh, crates. Um... Left in the in the uh, cart, hand cart itself, you also find uh, four uh, smaller uh, like harnesses attached up to the front end. Uh, Fizz would like to inspect the one that looks the least disturbed by the dog. Yeah, only it's... one of them had been pulled off the cart. It seems and broken. 
Okay. There, there are three more in there. You, uh, it, it's a sealed crate. It has nails of some sort holding it together on the top. Well, luckily for me, but maybe and not luckily because I think it's it would be on the carriage. I do have, I believe, I do have a crowbar. Mm-hmm. But make yes, a strength check. And the crowbar will be giving you a bonus. So. Well, I'd have to like go back to the carriage and then come back. A couple minutes pass crowbar. while you do that. Does does anybody else want to do something with the crates while I go fetch my crowbar? I'm looking around on the sides of the road for some signs <laughs> of anything. I just Before I, I fetch my crowbar. I just said if there's a... Uh, we could just ask Tawin to open it. <laughs> I mean, I guess that would be a good thing. Uh, Fizz is going to look closely at one of the... Does he see any sort of like standard markings or what happened to you? For yes, perhaps, you do. Of said? You see a seal uh, that seems to have been painted or stamped by something uh, on the edge, on the sides of a couple of the of all of the boxes. Okay. Well, you have hmm. you have knowledge local. Well, yeah, you have all the, all the knowledges. Uh, Nithyr, okay, and also okay. as you search around the nearby area, you see kind of where those dogs may have been laying down underneath uh, a few trees for some time. Um, you find a few of their bathroom spots littered throughout the area. Uh, and you find one of the a harness kind of out there in the woods that looks like it's been torn by something. Fizz? That, that symbol? You know you've seen it somewhere. But you just can't quite put your finger on what it what where you've seen that. Yeah, uh, RJ. Um, yeah, not really sure what the symbol on the crates is for. But uh, are you sure that Tywin's okay with uh, opening this thing up without maybe breaking any breakables inside? I'm. Pretty, I'm pretty confident that we has the strength to open it. Okay, what yeah. Think? What do you think? I'm just going to throw it on the ground? <laughs> I think that's what he thinks. I don't know. I've never seen you try and open up a box before. <laughs> the straps, do they look like they're straps that were used on horses, or do they look like they were used on other animals? Uh, much smaller than the horses that would go on a strap. Or on, on a horse. <laughs> but like, 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 These like straps don't size, fit themselves. Like dog size straps. That's a fair comparison in size. Okay. I want to see if there's any blood in the area while uh, these people fl play around with the boxes. Go ahead and roll a heal check as you hunt the area for blood. Oh, God. <laughs> Tawin, these nails, like Dude, you get your you get your hands on the edge of like the top of the box, and it's all <laughs> nailed together and it's all pretty smooth. So you don't really have finger grips. You like ah oh, crap. You like crack one of your nails on the edge of the box, trying to lift and like pry in some strange way. <sighs> I'll go get my crossbar. <laughs> your, your crossbar. Uh, crowbar, crowbar. I meant to say crowbar, crossbar, crowbar. And I'll start walking back towards the carriage and be back in a couple minutes. As he walks back to the caravan, I'm gonna look around, kind of doing what the same thing RJ's doing. I'm looking for like footprints. Yeah. See if there's any weird footprints besides the dogs. Yep. Survival there's for that. My... Survival. Just the, the only tracks you come across are dog tracks. Um. Uh, RJ, you look around the area for blood. No blood. There's some. There's there's a there's an odor in the air around the cart, RJ. It's okay. kind of got a bit of a pungency to it. 
Can I use knowledge of nature to figure out what type of smell this might be coming from? Perhaps, yeah. That might be able to help you locate the source of it. <clears throat> or if you've smelled the smell before. Oh, nice. Uh, it smells like food gone bad. Okay. I signed RJ. Uh, straps. Uh, harnesses size of dogs. Really? Is the cart that small? It's not very big. It's only about five feet across. Six feet deep, maybe. I could see it. <clears throat> As you're staring at the cart, Fizz is returned from the caravan. Crowbar in hand. Do you just walk menacingly with this crowbar? Are you swinging it? Have you got, like, a swing to your step? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm just... <laughs> You tell you tell Terry and carrying it. Mm hmm Crowbar Crowbar uh looks a little heavy in my hands too. Um <laughs> uh, and uh, I'll climb onto the cart. And uh you said plus two, right? Uh, I didn't say, but yeah, it's it, there's a bonus. Okay. Oh, so you you don't need to uh, you just add it? Okay. Oh, the strength of nine. Jam the crowbar in. I mean, you you, you you take a minute to like get a good hold, but and and without the crowbar, this this would have been another fruitless effort. Um, but it is a crowbar. It is a tool designed for this sort of thing. Uh, and you get the hook underneath the lid, and you crack it. Some of the the nails kind of out and there's the, the cracking of the wood sound <coughs> you don't like softly and carefully remove it like you just break a couple of the boards open <laughs> as the whole side it kind of just snaps up that's how it's done Tywin that's how it's done <laughs> <coughs> what's Tywin inside this Tywin doesn't even pay any attention to that That's pretty good. Inside, you find food. Huh. Did the smell just become stronger? RJ did a little. <laughs> That's rotten food. But Fizz, okay. it doesn't look rotten. Hmm. Like there's no visual sign of rot. It doesn't look rotten though rj um, you don't smell that i mean i smell it but i don't like it the the food does not look rotten at least on the outside uh i'll use detect magic and look at the fruit food to see <laughs> magic the food is not magical magic? <laughs> the food is not magical the food is not magical. Okay. Well, I don't know what could keep food in a semi good but awfully smells bad state. Yes, like so. Jared says, they're lawful evil biscuits. Maybe they're. Maybe they're fermented. I don't know. I don't know. You, know with those dogs. you can tell, like, okay. there's a breakdown of, of stuff. <sighs> and I asked uh, uh, Tawin, if you notice yeah. a dog, can you try to uh, corral it? I'm in, I might be able to speak with it to see what happened here. Alright. I guess I look around and see where those dogs are. Alright, go ahead and roll perception. If I scare them too far. <laughs> You hear that there's rustling out there nearby, 
but you can't physically see any dogs. While he's doing that, I go check on the opened crates to see what he means by it doesn't look rotten. Yeah. Well, I've only opened one. So, so you, you, you come up, RJ, you hop into the cart and uh, get up to the edge, and it, it stands probably, you know, two-thirds of the way up up you. So it's like a, a kid reaching up onto a counter kind of thing, almost. <laughs> um, and, uh, and you look in, and the, the smell... It's not like a, a full-on kind of rot sort of smell. There's just this... This this off off smell about it. It doesn't look rotted. It looks salted. Most of it, right? It looks like ration based food, which wouldn't really rot anyway. It's the same sort of stuff prepared for trail rations. You can see there are. Um, I mean, it's it's not a very large crate. It's maybe you know uh, two and a half feet by two and a half feet or so, in all sides. You dig around a little bit in it, and it looks like it's not all food. There's other basic-looking supplies. Can I use a praise to figure out what this is? Sure. While, while he's doing that, I'm looking to check in the scene the wagon wheel to see what's wrong with it. Okay. Uh, appraisal. It looks like... Well... You see, you find clothes, male and female. You find rations. You find water skins. Um, things that are like you find the whole gambit of what's nest, what's needed for basic survival. Almost like a care package of sorts, if you were to think to make one. You even find small little bits of herbal medicine and teas and. Um, Wherever these were being shipped to, and whatever they were being shipped for, it was almost certainly for the relief of something or another. Uh, the way that they are packed is a bit too... It's not like a trader had a bunch of stock. It looked like this one crate would have very specifically tended to the needs of a certain amount of people for a certain amount of time, the way that it's proportioned. Okay. Huh? Uh, and Nithya and the axle snapped underneath. Okay. I think this might have been uh, some type of aid to an outlying village. Still smells off. I look at the... F I look at the uh, prepared... Uh, food stuff and mm -hmm. can I use survival to check if it was prepared right or uh, run me a heal check if you're inspecting it in that sort of fashion <laughs> jeez 29 all right wow nice RJ you are a well-trained and well-read and well-versed doctor. You have traveled many places. But one place will always stick out in your mind. And that's what happened in your past. You recall this scent. It was something that happened to the food as a precursor before things got much worse. COVID-19. If, if, <laughs> <laughs> if you understand my drift. Oh, yeah. You recall this happened to the food weeks before. We need to burn this food. Like, now. Okay, uh, I can do that. Uh, we just have to get off the cart. Specifically, RJ, to give you a touch more information, the people who did eat that food, they developed something that you wound up calling fire gut. What was that? 
the, it, it wound up causing something in which your people called fire gut. It was a form of dysentery, but a lesser form. Okay. And it brought on vomiting, burning bile, was very hard to shake, and left people weak. Yeah. Uh, it's not specifically poisoned, but it is poisoned food. Fizz, can you uh, open up the other crate to see if there's any more that we have to burn? I sure can. I'll strut over to the other one of the other two boxes and heave the crowbar into the new <laughs> and, and the crowbar snaps. <laughs> crowbar doesn't snap, but you hit it. You 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 you, you think you've gotten it in, and you pull down and you slam yourself in the chest, knock the wind out of you for a moment. <laughs> 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 Stupid human. <laughs> oh, Tyween! Yeah. Would you still like to give this? Or are you, are you still busy chasing dogs? I got you. Okay, here's, here's the crowbar. If you don't mind opening the other one as well. Oh it's my still god. Bad like, it takes you know, you can take a minute, Tawin. You can take a for these things. <laughs> <laughs> and can't do it either. She tried. She was. <laughs> you guys That's struggle for a minute. <laughs> there's, burn them. there's an amount of struggling, but eventually the crates <laughs> will get opened. <laughs> However, the tops are splintered. They are not smoothly taken off. This is bad. Tawin, it, it looks like you could use, use some, some on, on opening up the last box. So fizzle assist Tywin in opening the last box. Also! Also! Fizz is gonna pull out his loot a little quickly before he to be like... Come on, Tywin! We can do this! We can break open the last <laughs> box! Let's get her done, and you're gonna take a plus two competency check. Tell me that box roll. <laughs> Opening boxes. This has become a thing now. <laughs> no plus two. It opens, <laughs> but... <laughs> These boxes are the death of us. <laughs> At least we're getting our low rolls off early. Burn them now. Get it out of your system, fellas. <laughs> or, or did a forge at it come? During all this, Taween, uh, you crack that last box open, and you spot one of the dogs off in the brush. They're, they, they seem to be watching from about 30 feet. I'm going to grab one of the things of me. <laughs> Okay. And kind of like, like have it in my hand as I look at one of them and kind of be like, come here. Make a handle animal. I mean, yeah, that's enough. <laughs> it takes about three or four minutes. You kind of come here and walk out there and wait. Flop it a little in your hand. Takes a few steps. Takes a few more steps. You kind of get lower to the ground with it. It comes up and it's at that like three foot mark. And you can tell these dogs, they don't they don't show the sort of uncare that would come from a wild dog. They don't look feral. You can say, actually, it has a collar on. RJ, I got a dog. And it comes Where'd up I and go? takes the meat. <clears throat> starts ravishing it at your feet. I, uh, I, dropped, cool. I dropped the meat at my feet and I just, like, eat it. Eat the meat. 
I go up to Toby and he's like, you look good with dogs. I don't find them. They're 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 better than humans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Close, close to wolves, huh? <laughs> now, as you come up, RJ, to kind of put it into some perspective, this one that you've come up to has a mostly brown coat. It's got like this big white splotch on the chest. But this dog probably weighs a good 150 pounds. It is a thick, stocky dog. It's the bull mastiff. Yep. Probably even... It. it is actually... It is statistically it's medium and bigger, bigger than, than you. Me. Yes. It's probably bigger than me. I look at it and cast... Speak with animals. Okay. And all I ask is, what happened here? Left alone! Aww. Toween, would you like to take these dogs with us? I'm not against it. Master's left! Do you want to come with us? You are masters? You aren't dog I'm master. <laughs> you don't smell yes. like master. We're friends. You have food. Yes, we do. Hungry. I, uh, I look at him and do a heel check to see if the meat is affecting them the, like it would affect a, a humanoid. Okay. Uh, yeah, the way that they're moving around, they didn't like bolt off, bolt off. They kind of staggered off. So, I mean, would you like to camp here for a bit and go hunting for some proper meat? These dogs are, uh, I think they got, they ate those, the bad meat that was in those crates. Open box, has food, can smell it. We'll get they you something eating, better. They were eating it when we got here, so. That's Hungry good. now. <sighs> and I, I look into my, uh my pouch, and I take out some jerky that's in it, so a ration. Comes up to you. Opens its mouth. Like, takes it from your hand. Chews it a bit. Sniffs you. Licks right up the side of your face. <laughs> nice little person. <laughs> uh, we should, uh... I'm happy now. Ooh, ooh, ooh. A scratch behind the ear. I start scratching behind the ear. Yeah, scratch, look, down, 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 <laughs> down. <laughs> yep. The leg starts thumping. So, they weren't attacked? No, uh, were you guys, what happened to your, or, it's one minute per level. And yeah, I'm that's, level four. That's fine. So, it, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll keep so that. Okay. Uh, what happened to your uh, previous masters? Hmm. Well, we pull cart. Cart snap. Cart get real heavy. Masters leave. Ah. Uh, leave dog. Well, you can come with us then. We pull cart. No. We have horses for that. Horses smell funny. <laughs> Don't play with dogs. <laughs> and I look at Tawin and it's like, I guess we have pets now. Are they not coming back? The, the masters? They left them, and I'd rather not leave domesticated animals out in the... Left side to cart. Had to bite free. <laughs> Couldn't find food. You know, sometimes dogs just like they think someone's been gone for a long time, but only been like, but to them it's like been days. Gone forever. <laughs> Abandon. Abandon. Didn't you guys hear it as a howl? A howling cry. <laughs> well, we can stay here for uh, what? 
how late in the or how early in the day is it? It's like afternoon. You know, we could stay here, hunt for a bit, and feed them if somebody comes by. Alright. If we're gonna stay... F f if we're gonna bring them with us, we better get some more food if we were already yeah. getting close to our limits, so... Play I guess I'll go... I guess I'll go on. If we're gonna actually bring these dogs with us, at least to the next town, I better go hunting for a, a while. Did the other three dogs come? They kind of slowly started to inch closer, seeing that this one dog wasn't being mistreated. They seem <laughs> they seem civil enough that they're used to humans. They're not, like, afraid of you, per se, but as you guys are in the area not making tons of noise, they, they, they edge in closer and start acting more like normal dogs. Uh -huh. So, I'll pull the crates and put them onto the side of the road, mm -hmm. pile them up, ready to be burnt, away from the cart. So I'll leave the cart, but I'll put all the food over the off to the side. Okay. Great. Okay. Can, would it be possible to make a little kindling fire out of the destroyed lids that we <laughs> made and then use... Uh, I have spark. Oh, yeah. Which is a cantrip. So light... <laughs> Yep. Objects, unintended flammable, fine flammable object on fire. This works as if you were using flint and steel. So basically just starts the fire without us having to start use flint and steel. Yeah, without the effort, you speak an arcane word of magic and the it starts sparking and, and the little flame poofs in the center and it slowly begins to catch and and burn and RJ. The last thing you hear before your your spell ends is no food burn, <laughs> and then your spell ends. <laughs> and they look concerned as they've gathered around the fire. <laughs> and I go up to uh, Drex and I say, uh, "We might. I think we're gonna stay here for the night and try to hunt for some extra food." We might have four extra mouths to feed on our way. <laughs> uh, well, all right. Um, well, I stopped here beneath some shade, so this this would be a good place as any. I'll get to unhooking the horses and getting them their food. All right. <clears throat> and I go check up on the dogs to see if each of them are feeling are feeling the effects of the. Neat. All right, doctor turned vet. Seems like it. Would you like me to do a heel check? No, you take your time, and uh, and you come to the conclusion that they were all getting at those rations from that one crate that they probably have not had knocked off the thing and broken open. Uh, considering how bulky and big they are, they. They are, you know, it, it's it's very likely that they had a hand in in where that cart that um, crate being off the cart. Yep. And, and I'm just uh, going to uh, help set the camp up and then do a little foraging around the edges and just kind of see what we're, what we got in the surrounding area close. Okay. A couples. I stay by the uh, dogs and try to keep them calm. Yeah, you. <laughs> so this is a, quite an interesting sight for sure. Um, of RJ, this this tiny little gnome, surrounded by four dogs that are damn near twice the size of him, and uh, you know they they seem happy for the company. Um, and uh, you know they give you licks and. A couple sit by you. One's one kind of just wanders the area. I have more bodyguards. <laughs> <laughs> you start making friends with them. However, you make friends with the dog. RJ now has a mount. <laughs> Technically, That's you could true. ride one. Yes. There are there are saddles. Well, there's strappings. 
harnesses, I guess. Not saddles. Not saddles on the ground. <laughs> I'd like to figure out why this cart, why the axle's broken. Okay. So, would that be a knowledge engineering check or yeah. a perception check? Yeah, knowledge engineering. Look at the structural integrity of it and how it happened. Ooh, that's funny. Very nice. Um, it looked like they were, the, the cart itself was made of very poor quality wood as you come across, as you start looking over the cart as a whole. Um, and if, on top of that, someone of poor skill made it. And so as you look un- at the underneath, it was not like a straight barred axle. It was actually bowed. And so every time the wheels rotated, it chipped away at where the axle rotates in like the bearing area, right? Where it connects up to the wheel and allows everything to spin. And it just slowly wore it down and wore it down until it got thin enough. And then it probably hit a rock or an off, you know, an an uneven section of ground and just cracked it the rest of the way. Well, it's a pretty crappy cart. I guess, uh, I mean, I wonder if the the owner's going to bother coming back for it, because, I mean, it's not that great of a cart. I don't know, but I want to know where it came from. There's something bothering me about the meat that was in here. Okay. Um. <laughs> I'm gonna look for any like markings on the the cart. I looked at the crates. The crates are gone. Now I'm going to look at the cart. The cart itself has no distinct markings or anything of that nature uh you do find on the inside in like a corner uh horribly carved into it billy i can't read oh shit yeah i can't read horribly carved into it what you know to be writing you know it's writing (laughs) (laughs) there's two circles a line right, with the dot. Right, right, right. Arjun, 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 I, I found something. Maybe, maybe it would be like a maker symbol for the cart. It's in this little corner here. Um, yeah, it's, uh, you know, I don't have my glasses with me. <laughs> you wear glasses? No, I don't. <laughs> I just know that that's something people use to read. Could, could you do me a favor and and, and uh, let me know what it says? Billy? Oh, that's <laughs> less exciting. <laughs> I love that response. <laughs> well, I guess Billy was the one who owned the cart. Either that or he was transporting a Billy goat at one point. <laughs> or our village kid might have just snuck into the card and carved it in, I guess. I suppose that uh, that's a plausible explanation as well. <laughs> I also like that this is like, I found something important. <laughs> what does it say? <laughs> Billy. <laughs> um, <clears throat> oh, we should I, uh, I, take the stuff that's not the meat back to the carriage. It looks like this was being taken somewhere that needed it. Did oh, you guys light the whole... I just threw everything in the pile. No, I, I said... Oh, did you? I just said... To... Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> there you at the burning the only thing fire. I heard was burn the crates. So I piled yeah. the crates up. <laughs> and, and then I... I yeah. So you have this okay. thought, RJ, but then see the entirety of the crates are aflame. You, you oh. were playing with dogs. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh. 
Um, huh. Well, uh, <laughs> we we could search search through the ashes afterwards to find out if there's anything that wasn't flammable. No, it was mostly small clothes and other uh, necessities that was in there. Well, you seem pretty concerned about the smell, the so are, are you sure that it, it wasn't like, you know, I mean, if the food was bad, maybe the clothes were bad, too. This thing needed to be ingested to, uh, to affect you. Oh. Unless you eat clothes, I think you'd be fine. Well, I mean, to each his own, right? But... <laughs> you eat clothes? I, I don't eat clothes, but I certainly wouldn't begrudge somebody who did choose to do that. <laughs> I, I wouldn't know any people that would eat clothes. I signed burn cart too <laughs> I mean it is if you want it's already broken and I don't think there's anything left in it it's pretty shadowly made probably make great uh, a great fire I'll leave it up to you guys. Tywin's already gone hunting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we figured you had. Maybe we should wait for Tywin to come back so that we can use it to cook whatever he, he brings back. Mm, pretty sure that uh, since we're setting up camp, there's probably already a roaring fire going around. But this could be a bigger fire. A bonfire, <laughs> if you will. I don't think we need a, a cart fire. It would be as big as a cart. <laughs> I don't think we need a f fire that big. It would also alert anything in the area to us, and I'd rather not fight throughout the night. RJ, you say that, and there's a giant pillar of black smoke coming from the grave. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> You, you see, when when RJ finishes that sentence, you see Fizz's eyes just dart for a quick second over to the current face, and then back and I contact with RJ. Yeah, look it up. Look it back at RJ. And I think, I both say and sign, you're both on watch tonight. <laughs> <laughs> said burn it yeah okay well I mean if it's no different to you uh, then we'll uh, just uh, try and push this cart back into the <laughs> into the crate <laughs> how, how far from the Maybe. edge of the road did you do this I, I did it a ways away, off off the ways, so it would be <coughs> boom away from the road, away from the, where we might oh. set up camp. It was it was off to the side. I mean, we on know how to start fires. If you want me to on do the survival, no, I'll don't worry survival. about it. Uh, while the fire is burning, now that it's already burning and it's too late to go back. Um. How's that grass looking for how dry it is right now? Well, currently, it's okay. It's it's damp in general in the area, but the the grasses are high in this area, as as was stated as you guys are coming up to this area, and this is a grasslands. The terrain as a whole. Um. It's not spreading at the moment. Um, um R RJ? Yes? Could you ask Nithirn if she uh, put, put rocks or something or cleared the area around where we set the fire? I, I, I forgot to check. 
I, and I see, I see him say that, right? Do I see him say that? Probably. Yeah. I say. Does he know? Does he know? I know what he says. <laughs> I just wave my hand, pull the weapon out, and it becomes a scythe that you would like cut uh, wheat down or grass down with. <laughs> and I just cl start clearing the area around you, it. You begin scything uh, the grass <laughs> around the fire. Okay. Excellent. Uh, apparently, great minds think alike. Uh, <laughs> and then you don't have to. You don't have to tell Nathan, RJ. I, I think she's. I think she her out. lips, Fizz. Oh. Around it. Water around it. <laughs> she's All quite right. good at that. Then, then I look at Fizz. And I go. Point at it. Thumbs up. <laughs> Excellent. And the fire is secured from potentially coming out of control. <laughs> I was going to wait for that one. Um <laughs> No, that was good. It was good thinking of his. It's just I think it's funny that he doesn't think that he can talk to uh, Nithyarn, So, Well, you've <laughs> never talked to me other than in a dream. Fair. Because she doesn't talk. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't know sign language. I don't know sign language, so I'm not, and you're an elf, so I'm not really sure if you won't speak to me because you can't, or because I'm too low brow for you. Halloween, <laughs> go ahead and make. Bad talk to him all the time. The DM council in chat is voting to burn it. Um. <laughs> 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 but uh, Tawin, go ahead and make your survival check as you head off this afternoon to hunt the surrounding areas. Good. You excellent. You come back with a couple of rabbits by the end of the evening and a handful, a couple handfuls of nuts and you have equivalently found three rations worth of food. Gotcha. Yes. Mm. I, I look at Ness. Ness. And I give her the nuts. I just drop her, dropped them in her hand. There. Put them in my little bag. I know you like those. <coughs> and then I look at the, the four dogs and I just chuck the, the rabbits at them. Here. Food. They go to town on those dead rabbits. <laughs> and then I just sit back and I'm like, eh. I see you guys got a good fire going. <laughs> oh. Yes, I'm sure you didn't have any problem getting back to uh, where you left us. Yeah, it, the, the towering black smoke let me know right where you... <laughs> Probably not best to keep that going do, during the night. Probably not. Tawin, the dogs eat and devour the rabbits, and then one of them comes up to you. I, I give it, like, a head pat. Do you have any uh, animal? Yes, he does. Yes, I do. It's waiting expectantly. Um, it's not good, but I, I pet the dog. I'm like, 
It kind of backs off and, like, shakes your hand. Marks kind of gruffly roughs at you again. What do you want? I gave you food. <laughs> it goes, it drags the, 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 the corpse over, throws it at your feet. The devoured corpse, or just like yeah, the, the devoured corpse. Over. Like, is there still meat on the corpse? No, it's been like dry. Thanks. I don't. What do you want? <laughs> I'm not giving you more food. <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> You ate a whole rabbit, and you're still hungry. That's your own fault. <laughs> <laughs> Drags the corpse over to you, RJ. Throws it at your feet. <laughs> kind of pause at it. I, uh... The other three have, like, laid down at this point. Belly's full. I give him one of my rations, thinking that he's probably still hungry. He destroys it. Okay. And is satisfied and goes back with his friends. <laughs> Three rabbits, four dogs, right? Yeah. Yep. They are medium creatures yeah. and each take a ration. Fair enough. <laughs> Tyweed's not the best with animals. He knows how the. I gave him that one point because one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really picture him as being like the most animal friendly person. <laughs> He's from the woods. He's as, from nature. As everybody's camped down in the evening, Drix just goes, um, So we're, uh, we're taking these uh, dogs? We'll see. I'll ask them tomorrow before we leave if they want to come or not or want to stay here to wait for whoever left them. What the hell you mean you're going to ask them? Gnomes have an ability to talk to animals every day. <coughs> like conversation? Yeah, they're not very smart. Well, they're dogs. They're not... Yeah, there are some animals that are pretty smart. Right. Well, you know, <laughs> if we take four more miles to feed, we are not going to have enough food to get to Formarion. By a long oh, shot. And we'll probably leave them here. I think they want to wait for their masters anyways. I I would like to see if I can detect like tracks ahead of where this cart was when we found it. Uh, yeah. Before that, I asked Rix, where do you think this cart would, came from? Oh, I, I don't know. I mean, traders, uh, from what I understand, take this uh, this route all the time from west of Opportunity out to the uh, to the border towns and uh, the outland towns out and around here, and uh, you know, some even cross into Vinyamon and, and further west. Okay. I wish there was something on that on that cart that told us where it came from. <laughs> we probably burned it. it fizz. Uh, go ahead and make survival. Sorry, roll away. Survival. Survival. I have not. It, I don't have, have that as a skill. Anybody can roll so survival. Then, Okay. Yeah, you can roll yep. It's a road. It's a good road. There's a lot of you know, a lot of things go. A lot. Of, there's the a lot road, of cart you know? tracks. Some are old. Some are <clears throat> most are old. Nothing really fresh. You don't even really see any footprints. Well, it's hard to tell if uh, the person did actually go go off or what have you, but I mean, that's what it looks like. <clears throat> so, anything else you guys get up to this evening? I go up to Neff. 
and say, because I want to say this properly, uh, I don't want to see any more of our friends get hurt. Would you be willing to take this ring? It it gives you a bit more protection than what you're currently wearing. <laughs> it's a ring? Yeah. Uh, I look at it and I go, You sure it's a ring? Or not a ring, I, uh, the, uh, that's, what not, what, that's not what you bought. You yeah. Bought bra bracelets, of Brace, bracers, protection. bracers of armor. Or bracelets. Of bracelets, of bracelets, bracelets of personal protection is what the bar has on, on yep. a sheet. All right. So I, I assume that's what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, I look at them and. What do I think of them when I see them, Navar? What's my opinion of it? They just look like bracelets. I mean, you I mean, see bracelets, but and they have uh, you know runic symbols carved into the uh, into the metal working. But do they look like they're much of anything to, to me, from my point of view? Mm, I, they're nice looking. <laughs> they're well made. Trying to think whether I would object to it or not. You know they're magical. I, just... I do? How do I know that? You were there when they were bought. Okay. Everything you guys bought from them, you know, is magical. Okay, so I'll take them for now, but I'll, I'll think about it. <laughs> Whether I put them on or not. I just want you to be protected. I don't want to see what happened to not happen to anybody else. I signed. Thank you. Uh, let me think about it. Mm. All right. That's what I do through, for the night. Okay. So you guys eventually, evening comes, Halloween gets back, that food's eaten. The dogs are fed. The fire eventually burns down and out. The cart, as far as I'm aware, remains unburned. Yeah, I, I, we didn't. And uh, everybody yeah. starts bedding down for the evening. Uh, tonight, uh, once you got back, Tawin, Wizrune approaches you and offers to study with you a bit. And uh, he kind of begins to teach you the basics of magic. You're muted. It's because I muted myself. <laughs> mm. <clears throat> I, I, uh, I, I accept it. And I'm like, I learned, <clears throat> I did a little looking into the book. And I found this one spell thing that I could, I haven't mastered it yet, but it's kind of cool. It deals with my blood. That uh, could be interesting. You should take a look at it, study it. Um, I'll help you understand the, the basics, the fundamentals that surround it. Sounds good. And then he goes into helping you with that aspect of it. Yeah, uh, at some point, I at some point I show him like what I've gone down so far. Like I'll cut my hand open. He like and grabs like, your I, hand as you go to cut. He goes, "Not yet. What? You don't need to. <laughs> Until you can do it, you don't have to practice that." Doesn't really hurt. <laughs> Just. It is one of the final components. That it should be the last thing that you do. You can't do the first part. Don't do the last part of the spell. Start with the incantation. Start with the hand signals. Sigils. <laughs> Until you can get those done, you're just cutting yourself for no reason. <laughs> <clears throat> That's probably why I haven't gotten it. <laughs> Almost certainly why it hasn't worked yet. You need the fundamentals. 
And then he like drills you on the hand symbols you need to make for like an hour. <laughs> and like the the intricacies of the verbal component, they're you know very subtle uh, ways that you speak things, and and there's an intention behind when you speak that he tries to get across to you. <laughs> I would like to think at another point he still tries to take the. He's like. <laughs> <laughs> and uh and and with that um everybody beds watches are had and the following morning comes now you all know you're about halfway on your journey and in the morning drix hitches up the horses and such and says, uh, comes to you, RJ. Well, uh, I'm, uh, ready, ready to get the horses underway. Um, we are, uh, loading them dogs up. We better do it now. Give me one second, and I kind of speak with Animal on one of the dogs. Yep. How far is it from where you came from? Really far. Walk do forever. Can, do you think you can get back to it? Mm, traveled the far. Went to many places, many people. Don't have home. Uh, well, Masters leave. Why master leave? I think the ma your master might come back so eventually. Dogs got hungry. Master been gone so long. Do you know how to hunt rabbits? Chasing hard. Don't feel good. <laughs> You're gonna have to start hunting for rabbits. That meat that you were eating was bad for you. Rabbits really fast. I didn't hold. Saw a rabbit one day. He ran away. You and your friends need to learn how to work together and catch those rabbits. Can't hunt if don't feel good. Stomach hurts. Nasty burning come out. <laughs> Do I remember? Is this uh, disease fatal? It's not fatal, um, but to mechanically give you a reference because you would understand kind of some of the intricacies. Uh, it's a fairly high sport save, and it occurs until you have three consecutive saves. Oof. So it is very hard to shake, and it leaves you staggered while you're under the effects of it. Oof. <sighs> I look at our caravan, knowing how much we have. I look at the dogs and say, the place we're going to is going to be very dangerous. We, I, I can't bring you with good conscience, but you have to try to get on your feet and try to hunt while you, if you want to wait for your master here or go explore the wilds. Found berries the other day. Bright blue uh, berry. <laughs> Smelled sweet. Made dog Most sick. Huh? Made dog Is sick. That? Oh. What are they saying, RJ? <laughs> they're saying they're pampered city dogs. <laughs> are they going to make it out here? I don't think so. <sighs> and I don't think we can bring them with us either. We don't have enough of anything to keep, keep them uh, happy. Unless... You want to bring them along and me and you hunt for uh, 
for the rations every day. I I picked up a bit of of hunting well. You and Noth were exploring a bit. It would it'll slow us down a bit, but I don't think we'll have to hunt every day. I think we might have to if we want to be able to to feed them and us. I'm not big on animals, but I also don't like the idea of them dying out. Yeah. Because I think they're closer to horses than actual dogs lately. Yeah, that looks about right. We could give it a try, I guess. Alright, well, I'll at least for three days until I can figure out if they're going to get better and are able to hunt by themselves. Yeah, I'd all do conscious. I wouldn't want them dying. <laughs> and I go to Drix. All right, Drix, where we're going to take them with us for a couple days, but they're not going to get any of our rations. Me and Taween will hunt once we set up camp for them. You said that to Drix? Yep. All right. Well. Can they... Can... Do they look like they can walk? Like, they can walk. Of, on their own? Uh, They'd be slower than the car carriage. Is there enough room in this carriage for three fucking... Four. Four. Huge ass, four. four huge ass... Yeah, you won't have much walking space in the interior of the carriage, but, you know... It'll fit yeah, everything. Walk much. I did shotgun. <laughs> you, don't, you don't think they would keep up without? They're not drawing anything, right? And the horses um, are drawing the cart. Yeah, what's the, the cart speed? The carriage uh, moves a little faster than thirty feet walking speed. Okay. It outpaces the dogs. Okay. All right, let's let's do this. All right, and I go back to the dogs and quickly say before <laughs> my magic fades, we're gonna bring you along for a bit to get you well, and when we stop, we're gonna go hunting, and you're coming with us to see what to eat. All right? Okay. I think I would like the dopiest sounding dog. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> All right. And they all pile in. They're well trained when you give them commands in common. <laughs> all right, we have four dogs in the carriage. Four bull mastiffs. All right. So, how often are you hunting as the days go by? You, you're about halfway in your journey. I would try to hunt every day with Taween, looking for meats and stuff, as well as once we do hunt, I start giving them first aid to try to help them resist their... Uh, afflictions. Okay, so first um, I'm going to roll down to see if and or and if, if that's the case, which day they recover. Just gonna roll them as a group. Okay. Um and they need three successes in a roll row, and you're aiding them, so you're giving them what, plus two or four? Plus four. Four, I believe. I'll double check. I believe right now it's with the four as well. Uh, okay. One success, fail. One success, 
two success. Okay. By day five of having so them, yep. By day five of having them, they will have recovered from fire gut. Sweet. Bad stuff. I also try to, when they do feel well enough, I try to bring them along with the hunts with Taween and RJ to try to show them how, what type of things to hunt and how. They are like that. exceptional hunters. Yep. They're big yeah. dogs. They yeah. are big dogs. Oh, yeah. You know, they won't be the worst thing to just keep with the party. No, they're pretty good at hunting. If you want to bring them along, I think we can get some good rations out with them. So, just off the top of my head, if you take them hunting, Taween, well, so for the first five days, go ahead and roll yeah. five survivals. Yeah. Can I, and I'm helping, right? If you're helping, then he'll have a plus two. Yeah. Do I need to roll survival as well? No, you'll just you'll be get, you'll be granting a plus two bonus. Okay. Like eight other. Okay, so one ration, four rations, two rations, zero rations, five rations are the success of your hunts. And that's a mix right. of um And that's a mix of, uh, of you know, hunted meats and animals that you kill, berries and roots and nuts, and even some vegetables that you find wildly growing. So, we we use our, some of our own rations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, yeah. I we are, we already yeah. calculated the current journey before extra mouths were added. So I'm just kind of yeah. tracking down the amount of extra food you need. Yep, because if you fail it, you don't get four. Then you're when we're going down by whatever quantity less than yeah, four yeah. you rolled. Right. Yeah. So we went down by three, then we went down by one, then we went down by four, and then we were okay. So yeah. Right. So after day five, that sixth day, you take them hunting with you. Yeah. RJ, are uh, are do you have any other conversations with them throughout this time? I try to get their confidence up and try to make them know that they're good at hunting as much as possible with how they're built. They're not just there to pull carts. You you do learn that masters used to took them take them hunting. Okay. They help hunt. Okay. And of they by the way really that they hard. very vaguely talk about it, understand what that means. Okay. Taween, yeah. are you going with Taween that day on the hunt? Yes. Okay. Taween, add a plus 10 to your roll this day. Because wow. each nice. each bull mastiff can add a plus 2. For aid. Oh, God. <laughs> Still a 17. Still a 17. So that's three more. So what this means is provided... You roll a 10 with your roll as Taween. Due to their aid, they will almost, almost, always at least get enough food for themselves. But at the moment, it does su sort of matter. So, do five. You're still trying to train them. You don't know how to train. You don't know how to work with them yet. <clears throat> right. There's, yeah, you're working with them and stuff like that. So, go ahead and roll five more survivals. For the last Ooh. five days of the journey. Well, Go I mean, are, are how, like, how's hunting going? <laughs> <laughs> Is this, we, we've been moving a lot slower, and th this is kind of boring for me to sit on the cart while you guys go off into the woods and on adventures and whatnot. What would you do, anyways? I don't know. Ooh. Um that sounded I, like a I picture I picture we we hunt only when we're like done for the day traveling. It would yeah. be our downtime anyway. I don't think it's really slowing us that much. 
and and yeah. also now that they are no longer sick, they they keep up with the carriage even if they're not on it. Oh, nice. Okay, okay then. I, I won't go hunting with you guys. <laughs> give you another plus four, but yeah. Do you know how to hunt? No, but I could provide entertainment. Wouldn't that scare off the animals? <laughs> scare animals with your music. Probably. <laughs> Why did you offer? Because I'm bored. <laughs> You'd be bored anyways. It's we a lot of bleeding. We, we have not yeah. been in a tavern now in almost two weeks. Bar, has this slowed us down at all? Uh, no, because you carried them within. I mean, the... <clears throat> but it's still been in, like, almost two weeks since we've been in opportunity, right? Uh, so at this point, with five days left on your journey, the entire journey's length was <laughs> 21 days. By Drix's calculations. Um, so you've been on the road for four, uh, 16 days. Yeah. And in Endriol, a week is nine days. Okay. So I will reiterate. I'm bored. I haven't been in a tavern in almost two weeks, man. <laughs> You'd be bored anyways. All right, okay. What are you trying to say? Are we going to get rid of the dogs now? I don't know. <laughs> We would still be five days away. <laughs> it doesn't change anything. Okay. Are we good? This is not gonna try and go uh, hunting with you, then. <laughs> you wouldn't want to hunt with them anyway. You, you would be the last person to ask hunting. <laughs> he'd probably bring Sin with him before he'd take you. Yep. I can yeah, see it. Really, he's not a big fan of Sin. <laughs> he likes Sin well enough, because he because li not likes Sin. Yes, he likes Sin well enough, and also he's kind of keeping Sin up. Not, not for life. So he's actually, Sin's actually going higher on it. All right. This this conversation was pointless. <laughs> well, and I'm going to roll three more, five more survivors. Well, so so, um, RJ, on these last five days, are you still accompanying Hans? I uh, talk to Sally now. Do you want me to come with you again? I don't mind. You're pretty right. good at it. All right, I I go with them again. So I like. I like the company. In in alternating order, <laughs> because this is the first segment you're actually getting to hunt with them. Yeah, you they haven't been trained and like quote unquote they haven't bonded with you at all, right? Um, I, so do I really tried. Yeah, but over the course of the last six days, you've been around them. They become familiar yeah. with you. Um, they're generally nice dogs, you know, they're not aggressive, really. Um, um, but over the course of these hunts, where you need them to very specifically act in a hunting manner, you will need to be able to handle them correctly each day. Right. Uh, so this next five, or, wait, yeah, oh, five day period. If, that, if that's the case, can I say that Every morning, I tell them that they, you have to listen to, to Taween when we're out in the woods so we can get you food today. Yep, yep. So he'll have a... I'll give him a plus two because you've helped the dogs on his handle. But he'll still, in the moment, need to be able to <laughs> deal yep. with them. At least until they are trained and can do it more based on orders and, and less on... Until that familiarity grows. So, for, like, your training period, roll the five handle animals and the five survivals. 
right. And then the handle animals, damn, will depend on if they add their bonus to that 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 related survival. Oh, not that day. Yeah. So that day they definitely they don't definitely that day. Yeah. The other the other three, so far one more handle. Uh, okay. And then the five survivals. So on that third day, the survival check will not get a plus eight off of them. Oh, it's going Oof. slow. That was a hint. That was oh, that was a, that was a six. Oh, okay, okay. That was a okay. six. We'll ignore it. They're, they're taking. It, they're they're coming in slow. Yeah, that's okay. So, I'll only click five times. Yep. One, two, three, four. As long as you beat a 10. Well, the sad thing is the third day. You break with, even. Well, <laughs> oh, no, because you uh, failed that day. RJ, day. RJ hunts with. Yep. So he's giving a plus two. So that first day, that is actually a 28. So. <laughs> You get nine days of rations just that day. <laughs> wow. You got, you got a ten. Day or something. There goes the third day that you have The you second have day, about. you get ten rations. <laughs> the third day, you get one ration. The next day, you get twelve rations. <laughs> and the final day... Two, three... You get eight. And the third day they failed because he failed his animal check. On that no, no, no. That, that was, remember that was the yeah. So, one. so he only got okay. a plus two bonus on the third day. That was only a thirteen, which okay, is okay. one ration. Okay. So, <laughs> by the time you guys end the journey, you were up ten trail rat, up ten <laughs> rations of food. Badass. Because the dogs were able to help hunt. That is including what they needed to eat. Because I, I did the math beforehand and I counted the amount of rations extra you needed and then counted down based off of that. All right. I look at Tali and it's like, I think they're pretty good to have around to hunt. Yeah, they're, they're not bad. In I'm kind of to... bonding right. one with one or two of them as well. Mm-hmm. I should so, ask them their names one day or t tonight. So by by the end of this kind of training montage of Taween and the dogs, they all have formed a decent familiarity with you, Taween. Okay. They will all now they are all are all now basically able to do the hunt command. You also you also know um, that they're already trained to act as um, cart pullers or or load pullers in yeah. general. Um, so those are the two types of training they have. Uh, they're not combat trained or anything like that, right? They're not trained to guard or anything of that nature. Those are things that you could, with more work with them, potentially train them for in the future if you decide to go then down that route with them. Um, but with this being successful, they are all four now basically bonded to you and trained under you. So by the end of these four days, you have these four big-ass bull mastiffs that just follow Taween around. Dad, Dad I says, think they like you. Dad says, don't get dog. <laughs> Dad and dog. <laughs> I gotta find that meme. <laughs> RJ, you, you mentioned you were going to speak with them again? Yep. What so do I you... Cast, uh, yeah. And I say, how's hunting with Taween? Hmm... Master, nice. New master, better. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, we can't just uh, call you to hunt without names. Can you give us your names? We dog. 
Mm-hmm. Well, I'll ask Taween and we'll come up with names for you. Master called Dog, Dog. <laughs> I think you can get you a better name than that. What name? And I call over Taween. Yeah. What do you want to call the dogs? Oh, no. Are we, are we keeping them? Do you want to keep hunting with them? They're pretty efficient, yes. Then I don't see why not. We've actually made rations, thanks <laughs> to them. And with the loss of... No. It would be nice no. to have some type of hunting. Well, we just can't keep calling them dog, and they don't. They said they don't have names yet. Oh, do they understand names? No, I, I'm talking to them, and they know what names are, and they they're always been called dog. But I think we can come up with better names than that. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> uh, sure. I'm not. I'm not against keeping them. I kind of like them now. <laughs> All right. I want to call one of them Rex. How about you? Uh, I don't know. I've never named anything before. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the first time for everything. We can get everyone to name one of them. There's only four. I know, but they can they can duke it out for the last two names. We trained them and took care of them. <laughs> There's a happy occasion. See the picture I posted. Yep. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> All right. Um. Sure. Um. <coughs> I'll think about it. All right. I will tell them when we figure out names for them all. But me and you get to name one each, and the the rest of the party can figure out the last two. Sounds fine. All right. <laughs> now I just picture the dogs being Rex. <laughs> Something in Elven. <laughs> some, just some sign language. <laughs> Whatever this comes up with. Basically. And I tell the dogs, well, I'll come up with names for you tomorrow. And I give them a rub down. All right. <clears throat> I hope they like me. You're the one talking to them. Yeah. But this is in uh this is when the spells finish. Yeah, but you're the one who trained them. So yeah. Taween, if you go to the journal, go into bestiary and animal. Or wait, does that not work for them? <laughs> That's where they should be. <laughs> what have I done? You have given us dogs, and then you're going to brutally take them away from us, aren't you? It depends on what you That's do the, with them. It's usually the best thing they do, give them a pet and kill it. Make sure they get attached to it first, well, though. Most of the times, the owners themselves forget about the animals and <laughs> almost kill them themselves. Mm-hmm. Yes, but we need them to hunt hunt uh, rations for us. I, uh, what's your name? Yep. <laughs> Fizz, Fizz is going to need a moment when you guys bring him over to ask about names. <laughs> oh man, I can't wait for this one. <laughs> I'm excited, actually. <laughs> so in that in that journal section, beef shiri animal. You should now have Bull Mastiff Tawin because you have worked with them enough. You now have their stat block and can see that. All right. It has their trainings l- uh, uh, listed, more information about them as you've gotten closer and work with them. And 
in the section of read aloud physical description. This is something you can add later if you want. You can add, you know, what they look like in terms of their colorations and stuff. I'll, I'll give you a little bit of leeway with that. And, right. um, and uh, you can add their four names in the, in the text as well if, once you figure that out. All right. But that is a bull mastiff, and those are your pets now. <laughs> I was thinking Large maybe we'd keep one of them, but now they all fit together and we're like this pack. RJ, like, in talking to them, you've also come to learn they're all brothers. Okay. They're, they're, they're all just from the same litter. I, uh, I told that to Tawin well, during one of our conversations and uh, while well, I'm petting them. Oh. Interesting. Kind of, yeah. I guess we I probably shouldn't separate them. <laughs> probably not. I still think they're city dogs, though. And they've, they've hunted pretty well. So, one of these nights during travel, <coughs> everyone during everyone's night of resting and bedding down. Who is your target? Frederick. Fizz. You fall to your slumber. And tonight, you dream. And you find yourselves, yourself, on the edge of one of your fields. A chore and a task you abhorred. You know what you have been tasked with. You have the hoe in hand and the endless fields that stretch before you. You can already see a couple of your siblings off in the distance have begun their work. And you yourself are contemplating if you are actually going to do this work and how you may get out of it. As you're standing underneath a shade tree, slacking, you hear Nithyrn from behind you. Frederick the Wondrous. How'd you come up with that name? Mm -hmm. Uh, it was just something that I came up with. Why, you know? I, in order to be all the well-known people seem to have pretty awesome names, so. Well, it does suit you. I figured I need an awesome name. Um, see. Sorry, sorry to intrude. Since we're out on the farm, a tall, yes. beautiful elf dressed in very, very fine clothes, obviously, very, very good looking. You know who she is pretty quickly because yep. she does look as she is, but her clothing don't look like anything you've ever seen her in before. Yep. But it is more like as if it was somebody who was out on the country for a summer ride, if that makes sense. If you understand like the outfit type thing that you might see if you saw somebody, I'll just say it, somebody of wealth that put on some sort of outfit that they'd go out and go out into the into the wilderness, you know, out, not into the wilderness, but out into the countryside for uh, some sort of a trip. And that's how she's dressed. Okay. I I would like, a, uh, out of character, I, I would like, I need a little bit of clarification. Is my character aware that this is a dream, or is it... Yes, you're aware you're dreaming. You will remember this conversation... If this is an unwanted presence, you can roll a will save to attempt to close off the connection. Okay. Hmm. Assuming you haven't rolled a will save yet, she'll keep going. Yeah, I haven't rolled a will save yet. Yeah. I'm just trying to. I'm trying to think. I'm. I need a moment to think about what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. she, she walks up to you and puts her hand on your shoulder and she goes 
But it, what is this place? <laughs> well, do you need help? This, uh, or should hmm. we sneak off and find something else to do? Now that you mentioned help, <laughs> uh, you look like you're pretty good at using a hoe. I don't know. My brothers over there them. could probably use some help. Well, let's see if we can get around to that. But I have a question for you. Are you afraid of girls? Or elves? Or just me? Uh, I'm not afraid of elves or girls. I don't really... It's, I mean, it's nice when you come here and we can speak, but... You know, you don't really talk to me outside of here. Well, you do know that I can't talk or hear, right? Oh. Hmm. <laughs> that would explain a lot of things. Although, you see the hand gestures I do, right? Yeah. That's a form of speech. RJ didn't know this, that, that form of speech either. But I taught him. It's quite useful. Yeah. I don't know. It looks a lot like writing. It's a performance. Oh. Similar to what I imagine you do when you play your instrument. Yeah. That, that, that piques my interest. If you now that you you describe it as such. Performance, yes. Could, I could put on quite a show, maybe. Yes. Like that. I've noticed that. And even though I can't enjoy the music that you play, I do kind of feel the vibrations of it at times. And I can tell, and it makes me think of times. I don't know when or why, but when I knew music. But That's great. I wanted you to know that... I do want you to talk to me. When you talk to me, I know what you're saying. Oh, okay. And maybe we can work on figuring out how you can understand what I'm saying. Sure. I'd love to. I have one really big request, though. What's that? Do you have an instrument handy? And one should theoretically appear. Did you play okay. for me your music? Sure. So I could hear it. See how good of a performance this is going to be. And she'll <laughs> lay back underneath, <laughs> lay back gracefully underneath the tree, leaning up against a tree. Kind of like, you know, please, I'd like to enjoy what you, what you do. I see other people enjoy it. It must be wonderful. And she lays back. <laughs> That's the end of what she's going to insert into it. Yeah. And, and she's not really going to help him do the work. She's trying to distract him into something else. Oh, it, you've succeeded. He's enthralled in, in playing the instrument. You would not have to try too hard to get him to ignore work. <laughs> I kind of suspected that. That's it, Navar. That's the end of my season. So the rest you of your, dream, your, your collective dream goes on with you playing some wonderful music fizz. Nithirn, you're able to take in the sounds of the music, the sounds of the wind over the field, even the sound of the hose hitting the dirt out in the field in the, in the distance has a, a fondness to it for you. And uh, when you both awoken, awaken after that night, you feel very well rested. Fizz, you remember all that was said, even though it was a dream. But you also know it was a dream. So that morning, that morning when I see Fizz, I approach him and I go with a with a hand gesture. 
I'm gonna be honest right now, I can't see your camera for some reason. Your hands okay, are it, lower. It, it, was, it was like a, it was like a, uh, uh, a, uh, a gesture, a, uh, a thank you gesture. Oh, okay. If you can imagine it. Uh, <laughs> you're welcome. And Fizz seems, you know, a little sad, a little, a little lost in thought, a little bit. Hmm. So, the rest of the journey goes by. One, one more thing, sorry. Yep. At, at some point, RJ, if you go through your belongings, you're going to find those bracers of protection <laughs> stuffed under one of your bags. Okay. That the iron did not put them on. Okay. okay sorry, so, no after... Those days of Taween going out and training with the Bull Mastiffs, of them recovering. And from that point on, nothing eventful happens in your journey. It is the same sort of grasslands across this entire plain. Same copses of trees. Here and there, scattered throughout. There's two times that you cross a few couple streams. Where you're able to stock up on, well, you don't need to stock up on fresh water, but we're able to bathe in fresh water for those who care to. And uh, nothing really eventful happens. The most eventful thing to be in camp is the dogs and the hunts that Tawin goes on. And the naming of the dogs. Yes, yes. we need to do the naming. But I, I will mention, though, that during downtime now, I'll try and like, sign language with. Okay. Yep, and I'll R try RJ to and and Nithirn. Yep. To, to, uh, I think like I need intelligence, don't I? But you don't have to roll anything. It's just a matter of time, sort of thing. And then, if yep. you, based yeah. on your intelligence, you're able to be taught a number of languages equal to your modifier. Is how many you can learn through this process. So as long so as you're at this point, I'm going to say, you know, you try really hard, but I'm just not getting it. <laughs> My so, modifier for intelligence is zero. Okay, yeah, this is not negative one. You'll have to do a point in linguistics. Yep. So, so the so the only way mechanically Fizz can pick up this language would be to put a point <laughs> into linguistics, which would represent a much more formal and like a lot of your effort in training would go be put into trying to figure this out sort of thing you're not yeah. smart enough to just have people speak it to you and you pick it up over the course of time yeah oh but, but if you if you are but thinking still that you're gonna do that in the future i will put the yeah. uh, nithian will put the effort in and try to teach you yeah so uh fizz will be put in his effort but like it's man it's slow going like mm -hmm. i'm pretty sure you taught rj and rj you know picked it up pretty quick super quick he, sh he actually understands super it perfectly quick. Now. yeah so fizz, fizz is you know like <laughs> like uh, a little bit of hillbilly i guess <laughs> It, and what probably makes it harder for Fizz, too, is that, like, it gets to that point where you guys have to actually start, like, drawing down the hand symbols on paper so that he has, like, flashcards, which is rough even more so because you can't, you can't write any common words underneath for, like, reference. So he has to sit there and slowly and gruelingly memorize these flashcards without any written oh, reference because yeah. he can't read it in here yeah. right down with, with with the symbols you know <laughs> like that right <laughs> so you've got you this know, like stack of sheets of paper with all these fucking maddening drawings of hands yeah. it'll it, it yeah it'll be a process yeah so whenever you do That's hit your next free time for the next long, <laughs> long time. feel free to role play that up as much as you wish. And then however long you feel it takes, 
even if you put the point in linguistics, if role play wise you don't feel like you've spent quite enough time on it yet, feel free to hinder yourself for as long as you wish until you think it feels right. Yeah. Um, that being said, do you have dog names now, or is that something you wish to do later, Tawi? And our dog. Uh, or whoever's doing like it. Like I said, like I said, I would allow every person to name a dog because I. Okay. I let's let's like I would say let's save that for maybe end of session where everyone comes up with one name. There okay. Yeah. Do it. Do a, a a workshop, a naming workshop at the end of the game. I know. I know. Miguel yep. slash RJ already had Rex. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, I'll yeah, I'll think about it. So, blanketly, then, you guys come together at some point during the venture. You name the dogs. It will insert name later. Um, yeah. And... Okay. I, I guess I'm going to have to point, point this out now rather than later. So, um, when we get together, we're standing around talking about naming these dogs. Fizz would like to take a look at the one of the dogs... And uh, see if there's what appears to be writing on the collar that it's wearing that we found him in. Go ahead and make a perception check. <laughs> you find the collars, and they each have some symbols. <laughs> Hey, RJ, um, <laughs> I know how excited you are with, with Rex. Um, there seem to be some things on the collars. That, do you think that they may already have names? What do the collars say? They say uh, one, two, three, and four. <laughs> no. Okay. RJ, RJ just says no. <laughs> says there's no number. <laughs> they were just numbered. I can't read. Numbers is part of reading. Would RJ, you like to learn how to read or to write this? Oh, I'm Dad. pretty sure me and Chris. Can <laughs> <you>. oh. <laughs> you know, I'm having a hard enough time going through this stack of papers with all these weird. Hand things on them. <laughs> um, when I whisper to his ear, you know, Tawin can at least can read Elvish, right? I mean, it's it's just not something that was particularly important where I came from. Seems seems like there's you more like... there's there's more important <laughs> things to life than. I don't know. I think reading might be a, quite a good thing to have when you're adventuring. I'm out on the roads. <laughs> you know, you can read where, where you can read maps where things are. You can read books to find out more songs. <laughs> I mean, that's a good comment, by the way. Well, I... Uh, I did promise Nithyarn that I'd try to learn how to speak with her first, though, so... <laughs> I, th I think I'm going to try and focus on that before I try this reading thing. Okay. <laughs> and Archer just goes back around the circle. Come on, come on. <laughs> So, the journey seems like it's beginning to come to a close. As finally, just over two weeks later, you see the landscape begins to go in a soft decline. And it starts to be a 
more visual of the land can be seen ahead. As it seems, you begin to head down this last day into somewhat of like a bowl. Not really a bowl, but the landscape is bowling downward. And not in any some sort of crazy degree either. Um, but you can see, and maybe the last two or three days you're able to see this in the journey, you see where the coastline breaks the edge of the land in the distance. This massive lake, endless. You cannot see the other side. On either side, left or right, down the coast, north to south, it is just land along coastline until it fades from your view. The water is clear and blue. And as you get closer, a soft wind picks up. But there's no sort of salty sea smell of that nature. And you can see on the edge of the lake, buildings, a town. On the north side of the town, you can see on a hilltop with a small wall around it. Too far to make out any details much other than general ones. Some sort of large, large building with inner courtyards and landscapes all contained within a, a large wall. It is right up against the coast itself. And you can see what looks like docks attached to this large section. To the south of that are scattered buildings and roadways. A large number of them, too. Probably a few hundred, even, that sprawl along the side of the coast. No docks or anything of that nature in this portion. There's no wall that surrounds it. And there's like large clumps of buildings and then some space. And then another large clump of buildings. All scattered throughout. And you have reached what you believe to be for Marion. <coughs> What are, so, what are, do we see people about as we approach, or do we see this? We see the the water in the village before we see people. Well, I'm I'm giving you like a very far away, distant description. Okay, got it. Go ahead. But uh, at this point, Drix kind of parks it up on this like hill. He's kind of gone up the side of to give you a better view. Um, as it's just down in kind of there's almost like a. Uh, um, the land rises to either side of the town and becomes cliffs that rise on the coast. And the town is nestled in this almost a valley of sorts that where the, where the shore meets even. And you can even see a sandy beach in part of along where the town's built. Drix stops the caravan with this kind of view says, um, well, the, uh, trail leads on in down. I believe that's for Marion. Um, I see, well, we passed it just a moment ago, about 10 minutes or so, but, uh, the road did continue on up north and south as well. Seems like if we continue it down into town, and we'll be there. I didn't know how you guys wanted to handle it. I know y'all like to camp on the outskirts of stuff sometimes. Um, so I figured I'd get y'all input before I went any further. Or I don't if this know about is you guys, but I could use a drink. <laughs> I need to stay in a tavern tonight. Oh, a nice 
bad. That's not moving would be. It sounds nice. I was staying outside. <laughs> so, uh, how close y'all want me to park it then? Are we finding place on the edge of town to park this thing and stable it, or? Yeah. I, I, think I mean, I'm, I'm going to need to go into town and get more supplies for sure. No, I think just the edge of town would be best. As we I'll go keep, ahead. Uh, watch on cart if the rest of you guys get. I signed to RJ. I'll I'll stay with Tommy. Yes, please. I think I think you'll be quite alone until we get Noth back. As we approach the sit the this new location, I'd like to keep an eye out for arbiters. Okay. So, as you guys make your way down into the valley and you go down the crisscross road that begins to sway back and forth, so it's not this huge, deep incline, as it does kind of sharp down into a valley here that the, the town is built in. You begin to see the signs of people moving about. You can see them uh, traveling the town and the roadways. Um, there, you don't really see any farmland around the town itself. And uh, as you get just to the edge of town, uh, where just up ahead the first grouping of buildings really starts, Drix takes the cart off to the side and finds uh, there's quite a number of trees that grow down here in the valley closer as well. Um, he finds a patch of trees, pulls off to the side, and uh, finds a little area where it's not really easy to see the cart. You can't even really see town in this patch of trees that he parks behind. And he says, uh, well... I'll uh, I'll unpack them here. I'm sure I can stable the horses, and uh, well, with all the dogs now, they should really help y'all um, uh, detect anything coming into camp that they're not familiar with. Um, I'll probably take one of the cart, one of these horses, and uh, start going into town and doing some supplies. I know we're running low on a number of things particularly the food i'll uh, i'll get them restocked with what i'm able to trade with and i'll probably pack a little extra this time now that i have an idea of the kind of stretches of journeys we might be taking uh anything else y'all want me to do while we're around just let me know um i'll probably stay in town if i find a tavern or something but yeah so what about uh, uh, Wiz and uh, Sin? And, uh, Sin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've stayed relatively quiet during the rest of the journey. I mean, wizard has been working a lot with Taween, but other than that, since nobody really interacts with him, he kind of keeps to himself. Sin, since the whole Noth incident, has also been quiet, but in a different way. You see him very often, kind of... There's a sense of sorrow that's been about him and he keeps to himself in in that in in in, in that sort of sorrowful sort of manner um but as you as everybody's betting down or um unpacking and you know departing the carriage uh Wizrun, he uh he speaks up as people start saying yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna go into town i'm gonna find an inn he says, uh, yeah, I'll, um, I think an inn sounds like a really nice change of pace. A uh, few days rest in a tavern or however long we're going to be here. And uh, I'll probably stay in town. But uh, Taween, uh, if you're guarding this, this carriage, I'll, I'll make sure to come out and spend some time on your studies with you each day as well. All right. Uh Sounds like a plan. <laughs> and Sin says, "Um, oh, it's uh, it's been a long time since I've seen the lake. 
Uh, yes, I, I, I do think I, I would like very much to, to come into town with you all. Uh, I think it would be nice to, um, walk the town and, and be with the people. And, uh, well, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll tag along with you guys for a while, I think. I think that'll be nice. We can, it's finally quiet and we can finally... Well, grieve as much as we need to. Yeah, that uh, that too. We can we can take some time to not worry about the road and, and, and stuff like that. But uh, let's let's not forget, uh, you know, why we came here as well. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna. Uh, one of the first things uh, I think we should do, or. Well, what I'm, one of the first things I'm going to do is try to find a fisherman or somebody who knows how to use a boat well enough. So, because I think we'll be needing that. What, what time of day is it? Is it when we arrive? Probably around afternoon. Travel for the first part of the morning before you got here. Yeah, we, I mean... We, we definitely need to get that done, but, uh, you know. We rest first, right? I don't know. I wasn't thinking oh. of doing all this right away. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but, um, I would suggest we could, uh, you know, I, I've been to, I've been to, uh, a couple of these, uh, per perhaps sh we should uh, hold a wake for good old Noth. <laughs> I know we're gonna bring him back, hopefully, but you know, just in case, we we can't <laughs> or fail. <laughs> also, you notice that Fizz is wearing clothes that are. Clearly, no longer traveling clothes. They're more of, well, let's say he's looking to spend a night on the town <laughs> or afternoon and evening. <laughs> it's time to party. Yeah, they, uh, the, it's 5 30 someplace. <laughs> oh, yes, very much so. Very much so. <laughs> it's been a whole month since I've been in a tavern. <laughs> Almost. In Elven, uh, Arjun just says, I think Fizz likes to drink a lot. Shake my head, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and in common... You know, Fizz, if you want to drink during the road, you can just give me some water and I can make you some spirits. Excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> Wait till he gets there. You, you're telling me this now? Because drinking tends to do, tends to do bad things to people. <laughs> yeah, well... I mean, I do like to partake of the drink, but uh, to be honest, it's, it's it's more about being around people. And, oh, know, so you don't need getting the drink to when play we travel. music for them, huh? So you don't need the drink when we travel. Oh, well, I'm not saying that it's uh, you know your the information. I may make use of your services in future. Oh, that no. completely wanted, but oh boy, I just I don't think I've ever been this far from opportunity. So it's a nice place. the uh, The lake air is good for your health. I'll sign to RJ. Uh, should we all go in at first, just to stay together? 
Mm, I would like to, but that really depends on Tawin. And I, uh, and I asked Tawina, Tawin, Nith says that she wants to at least enter the town together, if not spend, if we're going to split up at night anyways. Do you want to come? Oh. Yeah, that's fine. I'll, I'll come into town and see what's going on. I'll tie up the dogs to the uh, cart and let them know to stay here. Okay. Don't need full or big ass dogs coming in. <laughs> Would you like so me to talk to them? If you want. <laughs> or do you want to see if you can train them just to sit without having to talk to them? Sure. All right. I will leave it to you then. <clears throat> All right, so I am going to walk up to the and try to teach and try to uh, get them to stay. I'm going to, I'm sure by now, just to keep them with like the cart and whatnot. We, did we grab like their harnesses and whatnot that was used on the cart? Nope, nope because one of the harnesses was chewed out as well. Yeah, they were, they were, like, broken. <laughs> I'm like... Jay. We'll hand the animal. We'll be back. <laughs> Ta Taween, I, I, I have some rope if you need it. We'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see if they listen to me. Uh, where's hand animal? Ooh, nice. Okay. They will not follow you into town. Stay by you... card. I, I I would like to point out though that when you when you see when Fizz offered up his rope, he had it in his hand, and when you saw it, it was clearly not um hempen rope. It, it was actually silk rope. So, like, maybe not the best rope for the application. <laughs> <laughs> what does Fizz like to do at night? <laughs> and it's been money, and it weighs less than regular rope. <laughs> right, right. My character is thin and sickly. You know okay? what? It's, it's fair enough with Oztook. I had spider silk rope. <laughs> <laughs> and spider silk rope and a spider silk uh, bodysuit for the lightest armor. That stuff is expensive. That's like 800, pl 800 plus gold. But it's so yep. good when you have high yeah, decks. Yeah, for the silk. Yep. Yeah. And also, hard to find. I was allowed to have it just because of Oz Took's character. So yeah, I yep, made my draw. Yep. I'll tell dogs to stay. We'll be back, and then I'll follow the uh, party to uh, the city, the town, little village, or whatever this is. Okay. So <laughs> as pretty much everybody is everybody leaving. Yeah. Yeah, as everybody heads into town, let us go ahead and pause here for a break, refresh yourself, bathroom yourself. Uh, stream also broke, so I have to restart that. Um. <laughs> Stream's been breaking every, every Friday, it seems. COVID-19. Yeah. yeah. Man, I was really hoping that the DM would have had them pre-named and their names were on the colors. And we just, nobody bothered to check them. <laughs> hey, I asked the dogs if they had names. Yep, they were not... Do you not... think a dog knows what name it is? <laughs> they were not cared for in that sense, and thus were not yeah. given names. Navar. That's, yeah, that's Oops. fair enough. Yes. Working? There we go. Uh, there's some uh, chicken on here. Okay, cool. I've already come up with my... Uh... 
the name of the dog? One dog will now be called Witherfang. <laughs>